Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Jeremy Hills at Hills Machine Works on the Main Machinist channel. And I want to talk to you today about the number one cause of fires in air-cooled Volkswagens. We've all seen the fires, the pictures of fires online that people are having in their Beatles buses and Karma Gears, and it's a shame to see it happen. So today we're going to take this head on and we're going to find out what the number one cause of these fires are. The Beamer is going to be watching to make sure we stay out of trouble. Now. Most of you are going to say the number one cause of an engine fire is this bad boy right here. And I'm not going to talk about these today. Inline filters can be a problem, but they're not the number one cause of fires in an air cooled Volkswagen. So, what is? Let's take a look at this Solex carburetor right here. And I want you to see this is a Brazilian one. And what we're going to find out is this right here, the fuel inlet for the carburetor is the number one cause of fires in an air-cooled Volkswagen. Now watch this, I'm gonna pull on this. Grab it. There we go, it took a little bit of strength, but I was able to pop the inlet right out of this carburetor. And that is what you'll find is exactly what is happening on the vast majority of these fires. These get loose over time. I'm not bashing on the Brazilian carburetors. I have not tested a Chinese one because I refuse to buy that stuff. But I think the Brazilian ones seem to be more prone to popping out than the original German ones, although the German ones will do it. I've seen it happen. So, what can be done to solve this problem to avoid an engine fire? There's a couple things people do. Some people like to drill and tap this to accept a threaded in barbed style fitting for their fuel hose. And that can work, but the only problem I have with that is, if you see this, there's not a whole lot of wall thickness there for the threads. Uh, and you're gonna be using a tap drill, obviously larger than the hole that's already there, and you're, you're making it pretty weak around the fitting. So I'm not a big fan of that. Other people will use JB Weld and they'll smear JB Weld around this and then push it in, press it in, and tap it with a little bit of a hammer or something that can seat it down in there. That's okay. The one problem I have with that is sometimes the JB Weld is prone to, as you're driving it in with the hammer, you can smear some of the JB Weld down around the back of this and partially clog the inlet. That's no good. So what I like to do is use a Loctite 609 retaining compound, which is made for press fits. And it's a green Loctite. And use the green Loctite around here. Then put it into the carburetor. Get a small hammer. I have this small machinist hammer here. And just seat that in there a little ways. And the retaining compound is gonna make sure that that doesn't come back out. Now, another thing people like to do, and regardless of the method you choose, I recommend you do this, is to have your hose on here, clamp your hose here, and then run a safety wire from the clamp that's tight on the hose to either one of these screws or somewhere else in the engine compartment that can keep some tension on this to help it make sure as a safety backup. So let's talk about fuel pumps too. This can happen to fuel pumps. The fuel outlet on the fuel pump on the old German ones can come out. It's happened. What's kind of cool, this is off a 40 horse engine, is they had threaded inlets on a lot of these in the older stuff, which I thought was cool if you look at some of the older fuel pumps. But check these as well. You can have the same problem with your fuel outlet, although it's less likely to happen than on the fuel inlet of the carburetor. And if you think about it, the answer is kind of simple. With the hose on here, your, your fuel pressure is coming in and pressing against inside of here. And if the, you know, if, the, if the float's full and you're still trying to pump, especially if you have an electric fuel pump that's not regulated properly, the pressure can build up in here and pop that fitting right out. Whereas on the carburetor, you're pushing, I mean, I'm sorry, on the fuel pump, you're pushing away. So if anything, it's gonna to try to seat the hose further back on the 
fitting, but they can come off. So keep an eye on those. And last thing I want to talk about, just to make this video brief, is I ordered a fuel pump a while back, and this one is from DOS Parts. Never have used it. I've never had any other one from DOS Parts. So I don't know if that's a good company or not. Leave a message in the comments if you've used anything from them. Um, but these ones, and I don't know where they're made. I'm assuming they're Chinese, but they might be Brazilian. These ones, you see the fittings can't pop off. And I just thought that was kind of a, probably a good thing. Um, you're never gonna have that problem with this mechanical style pump. And I'm a big fan of mechanical pumps anyway. I don't like running electric pumps. I don't think they solve anything. I don't think there's any proof that they cure anything. There's a lot of talk about vapor lock and stuff, but I've run these air-cooled cars in everywhere from northern Maine where I live now down into Mexico. I've, I've run them everywhere. And in heat, in cold, I've never had vapor lock problems. And I don't think there really is such a thing as a, as a vapor lock problem in the vast majority of these air-cooled cars. So anyways, that's just a comment in passing. So check your fittings. Let me know in the comments, have you had one pop off? What happened when it happened? Did you get a fuel smell in the car or did your car go up in flames? Let us know what you do to protect your car from having a fuel inlet popping off and spraying fuel all over the engine bay. Thank you for watching. This is Jeremy again at Hills Machine Works. If you'd like to contact us about quotes or for your air cooled project, go into the description and we have links to our Facebook and LinkedIn accounts. You can contact us directly through those. Thank you very much.